so welcome back to the shop guys so today I'm going to be a bit preemptive and talk about the elephant in the room that I'm surely going to get questions about this is a my bench setup that tries to keep me and whatever I'm working on slightly safer um, and you guys are probably going to wonder what this is so here's the video what this is is a an uh, isolation transformer in this bottom box these are Hammond cases by the way the Hammond 1550N if I remember correctly uh, and all this is is that the bottom one has an isolation transformer a large 500 watt toroid transformer that weighs several kilos and on top of it sits another box which doesn't contain transformer this is the Jim Bob current limiter which is an old really ancient uh, piece of test gear that you know people used in the 30s 20s something like that when repairing old tube gear mainly but it's still a useful piece of kit today uh, what it is is it's a box that allows you to put incandescent light bulbs in series with whatever load you're powering so and the way it works is that if a load then say shorts for example you can then use that uh, what will happen is that then the bulb will take all the current and sink that current so even if you have a dead short in the equipment you're working on either you know through fault or general carelessness or mistake whatever this thing will make sure that it can't pass more current than the light bulb is rated at and this is a very good way to make sure that you don't blow like for example you have a gear that blows fuses how do you t like figure it out without you know going through an awful lot of fuses well with this you can set it at a limit that is below uh, whatever the fuse is rated at and then, you know you just go ahead so that's rather nifty so the isolation transformer as you can see has just voltage and current measurement it has two outlets uh, one that is grounded and one that is not. I know that having a ground on an isolation transform is probably not a good idea. However, that grounded outlet is just because, in case I need it, but also to connect to the light bulb limiter. And the other ground is if I want to go directly into the transformer. So, what we then here have is uh, switches for whatever uh, wattage you like there's two for 40 watts and two for 60 watt light bulbs and it's basically changed but whatever light bulb you fit and then there's also a bypass switch that lets you bypass everything when you know that something isn't going to blow up on you so yeah um, and this is for the guys that do not watch Big Clive don't know what this this is a cliff electronics quick test uh, it's basically a thing that lets you uh, connect things uh, you know with bare wires to the mains and it's really good it uh, isolates supply whenever you pull out uh, or open the cover so I'm going to use this to demonstrate something you see here I have a link and we're going to place that between neutral and earth oh neutral and line this is dead short that would blow the fuse in there normally but we're going to close it which connects those two together without you know let's be able to touch anything we're not going to touch the bypass because then you know we're going to basically blow the fuse in that one or overload the transformer so but we're going to do is put on the 40 watt light bulb and since we have a dead short you can now see that the current across here or the voltage across here has fallen to zero because you know uh, 
it's dead short. Uh, the voltage going out of the transformer, still okay. Sitting at around. I'm not quite sure that one is accurate. I don't think I have 250 volts in the wall outlet here, and no, the current is quite low, since this is only a couple watts. And I've purposely selected these nice decor light bulbs because I want as little light as possible as as much heat as possible. I mean, I'm just using a resistive heaters, and I want to be able to look at the filament because that will tell you if you have something that isn't quite a dead short, then you can still look at the filament and see it glowing, hence the name dim bulb tester. If we put on another lamp. So now we're passing 200 watts off, which is, eh, should be around an amp, a little bit less, no, half an amp. These aren't accurate, these are most for aesthetics and quick reference. But we're passing around 200 watts through our short. If this was a device that draws, say, 100 watts, it would happily work now, with the light bulbs slightly illuminated. And this keeps you from blowing up things. Basically, this box on its own keeps you from blowing up things. This box over here keeps you safe, because technically, I'm not going to try it, uh, but either one of those poles that we had exposed over there are now... It's not reference to ground. That's what our Lansion Transformer allows you to do, is that it's not reference to ground, as long as you don't connect any test gear to it. That's referenced by mains voltage. So, yeah, so, but anyhow, so I could theoretically now touch either the neutral or the line, doesn't really matter after the isolation transform, both are equal, but I could touch either one and be safe, because I would then become the ground reference for that circuit, and the other one becomes 230 volts over ground, or 50, or whatever we're going in with. So that's why you have an isolation. Let's keep you safe. This only keeps your gear safe and, you know, make sure you don't blow stuff up, which is always nice. So yeah, that's the isolation transformer. And dim bulb tester or current limiter. Um, yeah, do you need to build it like this? Probably not. Uh, did I like to try and, you know, get this? I don't know really what aesthetic this is. DeLorean meets Nikola Tesla, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps more Edison with those bulbs. But, uh, but yeah. And, uh, you know, these cases are quite nice to work with. It's die-cast zinc, I think, or magnesium or something like that. So it's fairly easy to, you know, uh, uh, machine, you know, you can drill this very easily, it's quite soft, and uh, yeah, nice cases. Only problem I have with these is that they slant outwards, probably due to foundry reasons, but uh, so you can't, can't get quite everything you know, to line up. But yeah, I'm quite, quite pleased with this one. Uh, yeah, allows me to not kill myself, or at least not as easily. But yeah, hope you enjoyed and hope this, you know, answers some of your questions about these. If you want to know how to build one of these, there's lots of videos on YouTube. Uh, I think uh, Mr. I'm going to mispronounce his name, but uh, Electronics Old New with Mr. Caldera in, in uh, on the island of Madeira. He has a really good video where he shows the circuit diagram and everything. But essentially what it is, is switches connecting light bulbs in series with your device under test or your uh, load. That's all it is. Uh, if I open this up, you would be very confused because it's full of wires, but that's just due, due to the fact that all the switches are double, uh, throw double pole. Uh, mostly to switch these lights on and off and then there's the meters and everything so it gets rather complicated rather quickly but in essence it's just a light bulb in series you could wire this up you know 
very very much much more easily than this i just like the selectivity and i've stolen this from from uh, the aforementioned gentleman uh, it's completely his design i just you know made it in my way i suppose uh yeah and all these i think these indicators are from mauser i thought they looked rather neat uh, they have this nice vintage thing about them. I'm not sure if they're neon or lead, actually. Uh, yeah, but hmm. that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this short demonstration. Not a tutorial, not a guide on how to build it. Demonstration. And if you build something like this, you should really know what you're doing when it's mains voltage. I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't, because you're not watching this video if you're not contemplating maybe doing stuff like this yourself but please if you're not this is not a project if you're just starting out as is tube amplifiers power electronics stuff like that you need to think about uh, what's within your skill set and mains power is something that can hurt you quite badly especially as you see 250 volts AC not really the thing you want to be playing around with. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching. Hope you have a nice evening.